So as we saw, one of the basic data wrangling functions is to take data that are in a table that's untidy and to turn it into tidy data. Once we've done that, then there are uh, many other possible things we might want to do to the data. One kind of thing that's very useful is to take just part of the data, either uh, some of the rows or some of the columns, and to split them off into their own separate tibble. This uh, subsetting function is done with a package called diplyr. I don't know if you, that's how you say it or not, but that's how I say it. The diplyr package has three functions that we're going to take a look at. The first two that we're going to look at is filter, which is how we subset out rows, and select, which is how we subset out columns. We'll talk about mutate a little bit later. In these examples, we're going to come back to the school's data that we have worked with before. This time, however, we're going to work with them in the form of a tibble. And so we're going to use the read underscore CSV function instead of the read dot CSV function. In order to use read underscore CSV, I need to go back and load the uh, read our library since I cleared my global environment. So I'll go ahead and load the read our library. Uh, now we are ready to load the diplyr package, which is what we will use to manipulate the tibbles. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is to read in the school's data. And here I can see again, here are the um, columns. One thing if you are looking carefully that you'll notice is that the column names no longer have been changed in the past when you read them in with read.csv. Uh, there were no spaces allowed. You, you had to have dots or something like that replacing the spaces. But with read underscore CSV, reading them into a tibble, we are allowed to have spaces in the column names. However, we're not allowed to have spaces in the code unless we surround the column names with backticks. Backticks are on that key in the far upper left of your keyboard, if you have an American keyboard. So you have to put a backtick on either side of the words that form the column name. And then if you do that, you are allowed to have spaces. If the column name does not have any spaces in it, then the back ticks are optional. So let's try uh, the first command, which is filter. And the filter command is pretty straightforward. The first thing that you say is the name of the data frame that you want to operate on. And the second thing that you say is the condition for determining which rows are going to be allowed to be passed into the new data frame that we're going to create. If we say that the zip code has to be equal to 37212, then when we run this, so if I look at the results, I can see that I've selected out only the rows which have 37212 in the zip code column. If I wanted to separate things out based only on schools that were high schools, I could uh, filter on the school level with a value of high school. Let's try that. So now I can see I have more schools. I'm only picking up ones where the school level column is high school. We can use more complicated expressions in the statement that determines the condition for row selection. Anything that produces a Boolean is a possibility. So here we can see we have used the isNA function. So if I just said isNA um, the, in the grade 12 column, it would give me the schools that have NAs in that column. If I want the schools that do not have NAs in that column, then I just put an exclamation point in front of the is na function. So I would say exclamation point is na. Uh, so when I do that, if I look at the results, I can see that I'm primarily getting high schools. 
because the high schools are schools that don't have an NA in that column. But I've also picked up something different from when I screened for uh, the level being high school, and that is special education schools that include all grades. So because they do not have an NA in their value for grade 12 either. So even though it seems like I did basically the same screen as screening for high schools, it's slightly different depending on how I set it up. So far, when I have performed the screening, all I've done is to just see the output in the console, which isn't particularly useful. But if I want, I can take the output of the screening operation and I can put it into a new tibble. So for example, I could have one called high school's data, which would only contain the parts of the school's data where the rows have school level equal to high school. So let's do that. Here we can see the new tipple has shown up and as expected, there's only 17 rows and each item in that row is a high school.